The following program is rated BBMALSA. It contains strong language, sexual situations, awesomeness, and nudity. It is intended only for mature audiences. Listener indiscretions are advised. Welcome to our Bliss Bringers podcast. The materials we cover encourage adults of all ages, nationalities, and sexualities to open up and embrace their wildest desires and blissful pleasures. You won't find medical advice here, just our personal experiences following the journey of sexual evolution and education in sizzling fun topics that were definitely not taught to us in school, but have wickedly blossomed into reality. We discuss adventures in ethical non-monogamy, kinks and fetishes, exotic places to visit, sexy events, workshops, and tips allow us to seduce you into embarking on new adventures where each day you ask yourself what's your pleasure this podcast is dedicated to handcuff john sacramento john if you're there listening to this this one's for you so sit back listen and enjoy thank you again for all your time of teaching and being a very talkative bottom Critical fail. Critical fail. Mr. Cindy, what are you doing? I am trying to download the podcast, but I am not tech savvy. I am having a hell of a time. Well, luckily for you, for your Android, there's now the Blissbringers application. A mobile application? Yes. No. You can just search for it in the Google Play Store. Or you can go to android.blissbringers.com with your web browser and get it from there. So what does it do for me? It downloads the episodes, it streams the episode, it slices and dices show notes and articles, and it allows you to send us voicemails, mails. Of course. Wow, I love it. You can tweet. So what happens if I have an iPhone? If you have an iPhone, then you go to itunes.blissbringers.com and the podcast will automatically end up in your regular podcast. I don't have to do anything? It's automatically scheduled? It's one click and you're done. Sweet. Enjoy. First on the road podcast session. Yay. This is podcasting while walking. We also both look like total dorks now running through the street with audio equipment. Let's debrief about yesterday. Yeah, last minute we decided to go out and have some Saturday night sexy time. We wanted to do some central play. So we went to one of San Francisco's oldest BDSM club called the Citadel. The mistress has never been there, and I have not been at that location. I've been there two times before, and every two times they were a different location. So this was the third location that they were at. It's a pretty nice location. So what were your first impressions when you got there? Well, my first impression is you got to watch where you park. (laughs) Folks, when you do visit, make sure to drive around because uh, on one side of the blocks, it's pretty seedy looking. And then there's lots of clean parking on the other side as you go closer to Union Square. That was my first impression. I did not want to get out of the car, right? Don't park near the crackhead. Well, thankfully, SF Citadel is off of Eddy Street, and that was not a dirty street. That was a nice street, lots of little clubs. We finally found a parking spot. We signed in. We walked in. I liked the music. I heard off in the distance, you know, a woman yelping, and then I could hear some smacking. I'm like, ooh, it's a -a slap-a-meter going on here. Yeah, it was supposed to be the event after the spanking training, so I'm not sure if Yes. Many people there were were there from I I don't have the impression. I I think most of them were fairly regulars or something like that. Yeah, the, uh, SF Citadel does quite a few classes. So for those listeners that are new to the BDSM and you know you've, you've read the uh, 50 shades of gray, so now you're starting to dabble in a little bit of the kink. Uh, You want to learn how to spank and flog. You know, SF Citadel is a great location because they have quite a few pro doms that deliver those classes. And yeah, yesterday they were doing spankings. This week they were doing a a couple of other one-on-one classes. But I was surprised that, you know, it was late when we got there, don't you think? It was like 10, 1030. Yep. I was really surprised that SF Citadel closes so early. It closed at 1 o'clock. The people that are... Under 40, they don't get going until like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Oh, that was the other thing. I was uh, really pleasantly surprised to see the number of volunteers that work at SF Citadel in the dungeon, walking around and offering answers to people who had 
bewildered looks on their face. I liked it. Yeah, they were all very friendly and chatty. I think I was the only mistress, though, walking around. Um, now that you mention it, yeah, I think so, too. The other girls there were all submissives, which isn't a bad thing. I like being the only one. But we did meet a, a certain character. Yes, we hadn't even put our bag down yet. And out of <laughs> nowhere... A Pop. basic looking dressed man. Yeah, he he was totally in, in, in streetwear with a baseball cap and clean cut. Yeah. So he he that came and me. <laughs> he came and talked to you. So what was that about? He was he immediately went into the negotiations and what he liked and I was a bit overwhelmed because my senses were just absorbing the club around us at that moment because we literally I did not have my coat off yet. And he just, he swooped in. He saw the two of us. (laughs) Fresh meat. Yeah, he saw fresh meat and decided, I need to meet these guys. So he he came over and, you know, the one term that kept resonating all night long was, for my protection and yours, miss? For safety. For safety. Yeah, you have to do it like this and like that. So he brought handcuffs? Yes, that was his toy. And he wanted to put them on you? (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. Silly boy. He talked a lot. <laughs> he was entertaining me. He really wanted to go and play immediately. Do you remember? He, yeah. he said, oh, I'm going to leave in a couple of hours because I need to drive to Sacramento. And it was fun. It was a little bit creepy at times, but it was a new adventure. And I got to say, that was a new adventure. Reverend John. Yes, I'm no longer just John. I, I need to move that up. Off, last, last night, night. <laughs> that gentleman was absolutely a just John, just Sacramento John. So you are now my Reverend John. Blessings be with you, my child. So tell us what happened. How did he start the conversation and, and where did he take it? I thought he was just going to welcome us, you know, because we were just undressing. But he was going off, you know, and he started pulling out his handcuffs. I started thinking in my mind, well, maybe he's one of the volunteers. Maybe he just wants to make sure that we know what we're doing in the dungeon before we approach because we're new faces. And you know, those volunteers, absolutely, they they go there regularly. So I'm sure they can tell if people are new and if people are, you know, common. Yeah, to new, new faces. I mean, that would have made sense. That, and that's who I thought he was at yeah, first. In, initially, I sort of had that impression, too. Then he started explaining about... Handcuffs. Uh, handcuffs. He wanted to know if we were familiar with them and how to use them. I didn't know how to answer that because I love the central BDSM and I am always looking for new adventures. So I actually answered honestly. Well, I, you know, I'm familiar with handcuffs, but haven't really played with them. I like rope and I like, yeah, yeah, I that's like sort, the other that, things. That's sort of more our speciality. So then he put them on you. He, he first wanted to put them behind your back and oh, you no. said, no, fuck that. <laughs> no, nobody gets me tied up. He wanted to go into the dungeon. He said he wanted to play. I told him to come back later, that we wanted to walk around and get a feel of the land before we discuss anything. Because he he wanted to go into the negotiations right then and there, he said. So that was a little bit weird. So we pushed him away a little bit. We walked around, checked the place out. What was your first impression? I thought it looked way better than, than the second location they had. Way better than the previous setting that they had. Why? Because the, the previous one was more like in, in one big warehouse where this has more of a cozy, intimate feeling with multiple rooms and yeah. a nicer setup. Very spacious. Less, less industrial. Oh, they they also have a disco dance floor underneath the... St. Andrew's crosses. Underneath one of the main uh, BDSM play areas. And the benches, the spanking benches. Yeah, it, it's very impressive. They have a lot of gear, so you can definitely get your groove on um, if you want there. You know what I was also pleasantly surprised is that they had a very large bed area for intimate play. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a couple that was there all evening while we were there, involved with each other, you know, nothing, nothing yep. loud or anything. It was... Just very central to see them. And I thought that was that was a major turn on. They only got up for getting water. And then they went back to their play. Yeah, yeah no, they were uh, a very gorgeous, yummy, delicious looking movements. Then then we talked with one of the dungeon masters there. Mm-hmm. They called themselves safety. They're there during Pride Street to make sure people don't get run over by the floats because you've got a bunch of crazy happy people running around naked, he was saying. And one year they had a 
a mishap and a float squished one of those. He gave us a little bit of the, the lay of the lands, and then our friend Sacramento John came back, wanted to negotiate again. <laughs> he wanted to be a sub, but he was topping from the bottom. I'm like, dude. I would so ball gag you. Actually, I give him a lot of kudos for being very assertive and then also uh, communicating what was the right way to put handcuffs on. Because for me, it was the first time I was putting a handcuffs on a submissive, well, alleged submissive. He was not a submissive. But if I had turned them around, I wouldn't be able to get that little bit of a key in there. I wouldn't have been able to unlock them. I was having a hard time anyhow. Yeah, but I think he was overplaying it a little bit. I mean, handcuffs are not that complicated. Maybe he has a little OCD. Yeah. He knows what he likes. I decided I was just going to become a watcher, a voyeur. I wanted to see what everyone else was doing. Let's uh, talk about what we saw. So there was a adorable uh, young woman that was being led around by her dom and slash master that night, last night. Yeah, the, the, the one with the Burning Man fuzzies. Yeah, and she had cute called? little teddy bear green ears. I, I was watching them. And I noticed something that made me crack up. What? You know that they sell these hands-free wine glass holders? Yes. You know that you hang around your neck that has a, a hole in it? Where yeah, my friend at work glass? gave me one. Yes. <laughs> they were using that on a Hitachi wand, stick the head through it, and then they use that to attach it to her pussy. So they had... The oh, my God, I wand. have one at home. Yes. I am going to use that wine holder at home now. I know what to yes. do with it. <gasps> Yay. I'm, I was totally cracking up when I, re- when I saw that. I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> I didn't see it. I always miss the good stuff. I also saw there was this bed and there was a woman on it. And this man had a Hitachi. But on the end of the Hitachi, it almost looked like a... I don't know, like a scoop. It definitely was a G-spot hitter, but it was a plastic, and it looked like it had an angled piece that when you put the Hitachi wand next to the woman's pussy, that when it goes in, this plastic piece would go in, it would scoop behind her pubic bone. I did not see it. What they probably used is one of those Hitachi extra add-ons that you can put on there. Oh, it definitely was an add-on. Call it the Gonzo nose. That's exactly what it looked like. It looked like Gonzo's nose. Only it was going into places where I don't think the Muppets would go. <laughs> you never know. Well, I saw her shaking and moaning and groaning, so uh, Gonzo did a great job down there. On to the other thing. So Mr. Uh, Sacramento John, he came back three or four times and was hanging out, doing the whole power persuasion with the handcuffs and trying to convince me. And, you know, it was getting to the annoying stage. And then that's when that's when that mistress comes in because I wanted to start commanding him and take in charge. I I was getting into the bitch mode. I so, really was. So that was persuasion by annoyance. Yes. Don't pull this on too many other mistresses. I know a few that would give you a good slap upside the head. So I seized a moment to learn a new technique, and since I had not played with handcuffs, and he was absolutely willing to teach. You know, basically, top from the bottom. Boy, that boy talks a lot. He was willing to teach you. You couldn't shut him up. Couldn't shut him up. So I took that leap of faith, and I had Reverend John come with me uh, to be my bodyguard, and we went off to start our little scene. So we found a quiet spot in the cage. So that scene went on for quite a long time. It, It started off, and it didn't end until the Dom Masters actually did come and give us a 10 minute ring that it was almost time to close down. But what happened during that scene? He wanted it, not only the handcuffs, but his fetish is to be treated like a a prisoner. He really had, it, as the scene started to evolve and he told me what he liked, he had the whole scene painted out. He wanted to be handcuffed and he wanted to be frisked. He wanted to be searched. I needed to ask, did I have any sharp objects or anything that would poke me if I search his pockets? I had to go through all the steps of what a police officer or a prison guard would do. And in the meantime, holding him in a secure spot with his hands behind his back, palms up, thumbs crossed, put the handcuffs on him. Did you like that? Yeah, absolutely. I felt safe with him because you were right there on the outside of that cage looking in. I I could not have done this without you. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that if I started getting nervous, I could... I could yell, Aardvark! 
our safety word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he really wanted to get into the whole prisoner, now you're going to be sent to jail. And then his his scene started to evolve into, I want you to wear riding boots. I'm like, riding boots? What the hell do riding boots, horse riding boots, have anything to do with search and seizure and all that good stuff? I think he wanted so a scene like, Elga will win from the SS. Or something like that. He he bounced back and forth. His scene was evolving in his mind. You know, he was talking about, I wish you had high heel pumps on. I want to take you shoe shopping. I made sure that he realizes no man comes we, comes with me and tells me what shoes to buy. Yeah, he he got lucky a couple times there that he didn't beat him up. Absolutely. Do you remember me telling him to just shut up? He talked too much? I would have been saying to him, you're either going to be a top or a bottom. If you're going to be a top then okay you're gonna find somebody else if you're gonna be a bottom then you're gonna be a bottom and you're gonna do what i say and you're gonna say something when off otherwise you're gonna shut up exactly and you're gonna go where i want to go chatty chatty kathy hold on listeners because there's another part to this little story so his other little fetish thing he doesn't only want to be handcuffed and searched he wants to be undressed now, why couldn't the motherfucker have said that before I had the handcuffs on him? Because then I had to go through the whole scene again, uncuff him. Maybe that was intentional. Yeah, I think so, too. I was not sure what to ha- think about it. But you know what I did like? He wanted me to put rubber gloves on. He's thinking, why do I have to put rubber gloves on if I'm just undressing you? It wasn't a bad idea. No, it was a really good idea. No, he wanted to keep his scene... So you you learned a couple of things, I guess? Oh, yeah. I also learned that he wanted to be bent over and grab his butt cheeks and be told to cough. That blew my mind. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to just handcuff play? Yeah, he was, what's called, uh, escalating the scene. He waited until I was comfortable with each of the steps he was taking me through. And then at the end of the evening, after I walked him around, because he wanted me to walk him around like my prisoner, with his head down, because he didn't want people to recognize him, he said. So did you see us when, did you follow us when we went in, when I did walk him back to the private room in the lounge? He wanted to get to a private area. He was getting creeped out by the, the voyeur that was behind us. If you are in a dungeon, then... You cannot expect not to be watched. That's what I told him. And that's why I kind of kept him facing the wall at all times. Plus, that was one of his fetishes. He wanted to be frisked up against the wall. So the the end of the scene, the end of the night, luckily uh, we got to the 10-minute mark all in one piece. But he still kept negotiating. I said, no, scene's over, honey. By the way, his cock was hard. Hard, hard, hard. All evening. The entire time. His body was gorgeous. He had beautiful eyes, just a little out there. And you know what kept running through my mind is how do people get programmed this way? Where do you come up with this? I mean, it's just, I'm thinking to myself, this man has really choreographed scenes and he's got down to details and he knows exactly what he likes. But you know what? It was a, I got to say, kudos to him because he was a great coach. He was a great Top bottom. I'll say he was top and from the bottom the whole evening, and I learned a new trick. I am absolutely going to go buy a set of nice handcuffs because it, I did have a lot of fun. So all in all, besides the handcuff stuff, what's the most interesting thing you learned that evening? That there are a lot of normal-looking kinky motherfuckers out there. <laughs> People have different fetishes. Where do they come from, though? Where do the ideas come from? I couldn't help. I'm always psychoanalyzing, and I, I don't know if that's a good thing, because I kept thinking, wow, did his mother do this to him? <laughs> no, there, there really is no rhyme or reason from a scientific point of view how fetishes get built into the human brain. People have thought about that, or like, oh, I like spankings because I was spanked as a child, or I like spankings because I never was spanked as a child. Or foot fetishes. I mean, how do these people get to that point where they have the, a sexual fetish that, I wouldn't say it's out of the norm because in their world it is normal, but where they get these niche fetishes? There's many a doctorate study that has been done on that. and i got to no, read some of this stuff. Nobody really knows. 
That's the short answer. There's things that I never realized that somebody would find sexually a turn-on. The couple that was playing in the sling next to the cage where you were in, she had a baby daddy fetish. Oh, what do you mean? I so missed it. She, she was supposedly the baby and he was a daddy. They didn't really play on that that much, but I saw it from their FetLife profile, and I saw her running around with her little teddy bear and stuff like that. Oh, I missed it. They didn't really play on that. The, the interesting thing there was in that sling, she was getting double-handed fisted, I think. What do you mean double-handed fisted? Imagine you put your hands in like you're going swimming. Like prayer position? Yes, and then he put his hand in that way. Did all his fingers disappear? I think so. Now you see it, now you don't. Yeah, it was like a magic trick. Wow. Wow. All right. Okay, so did she like it? Yeah, she was screaming and they were making a puddle. Oh. How interesting. To my listeners out there, we didn't do any sexual plays with our Sacramento John. And that was one of the things that I learned as well is this is the first time that I've played with a man to this extent. I've had fun with men on St. Andrew's crosses and spanking, but never a real scene. And so this is my this was a first timer for me. Yay! Yay! So it was good. All in all, I had a great time. I would love to I want to you know, do it again. I want to learn more. I am not going anywhere without you, Reverend John. You are going to be with me. You are my bodyguard. You are my safety. And you're my love of my life. So I wouldn't be here without you, encouraging and making me feel safe and confident. Now, can I go home and restrain you and you bend over and cough for me? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sure, baby. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. All right. So that's it for our evening. Naughty News of the Week. Hey there, Reverend John. Have you heard about the new Poly Summit 2013 Beyond the Love in Columbus, Ohio? No. When is it? It's November 15th through 17th. It's a brand new event that the Poly community in Ohio has put together. And it has a wealth of classes and workshops. And for those folks that aren't necessarily Poly per se yet, but they want to learn more about it, such as those of us that used to consider ourselves swingers, but we've been fucking the same friends because we love them so much, we can consider ourselves poly. But those folks that want to learn more about what this love is all about, you should check it out. And I also hear that they're even looking for some extra presenters. So if you want to check them out, go to beyondthelove.org for all the details. Join the love. So that's all that we have for you this week. Uh, Make sure to tune in next week. Same channel, same time on the internet. I don't know how they do time on the internet or channel on the internet, but... (laughs) Enjoy. Same same podcast. Same podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure of that. And make sure to tune in. If you have any comments, I would love to hear your feedback on this, this little adventure that we just shared with you. If you yourself have a... A freaky fetish that is in your mind, a scene that you would love to talk through. I would love to hear about it. So uh, please post your comments. You can send it to us on our Bliss Bringers email if you want to do just one-on-one. You can also find us on FetLife. We are... I'm Mr. SF Cuties. I'm Mistress SF Cuties. And then the BlissBringers.com. Yep, you can find all the links there, also including to our FetLife and other sites' profiles are all there in one handy-dandy page. Again, if you're in the Bay Area and you're listening to us, if you're in Northern California or anywhere in California or plan to be here in California, check out SF Citadel's calendar of events. Send them an email if you want to learn some classes or if you want a more private session with one-on-one. And next week, what are we doing next week? That's a surprise. Ooh, we're going to Los Angeles. We're heading to Dragon's Gate. Yay! Yay! More to come. Thanks, everyone. Until next time. What's your your pleasure? All names mentioned in this show are either fictional, taken from public record, or held by people who have given their explicit consent to be mentioned.